Welcome back to the Venom Workshop. So today what I'm gonna show you, I can't believe I haven't made this video yet. This is insane. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do the timing uh, on your 125cc engine. This will work on any 125cc engine. Um, any of the ones we sell, this will show you how to set the time on it, no problem. Uh, and we're gonna do a, a valve adjustment. I'll show you how to set the valve clearance as well. So uh, I'm just gonna get the camera in a little bit better place and we'll start taking that. Uh, we're not gonna take the whole engine apart or anything, just a couple things we have to take off and uh, we'll get started. Alrighty, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take, wanna take our engine caps off. Now, in behind this cover, there's no oil back here, so you can take these off, no problem. Just pop them off. It's a, the stator's dry in here, you don't have to worry about it. Um, I already took this one off. Now, if you're having a hard time removing this center one and it wants to keep, like it's gonna strip, I'll show you a little trick. Um, when it's tight in here, sometimes the little rubber gets tight and it doesn't wanna let go. So usually what I'll do, don't do it hard, but put a screwdriver in there and just tap it. Tap it, don't put a hammer through it. Just a couple taps like that. And that'll usually loosen right up like that. And you can go ahead, you can take it out like that. Now, on the flywheel inside here, there's some timing marks. I'm gonna bring it up and I'm gonna show you the timing marks in a sec. But before I do that, I wanna remove this cover right here. To do that, you're just gonna need a 10 mil uh, socket, wrench, whatever. Just on the other side of this block right here, you got your little uh, pin right here. So we're gonna take that out. So. So we're gonna put our camera here so we can see. We'll go to the other side of this, loosen this up, this girl here. Just like that, <clears throat> like that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll take that bolt out. This is actually a rebuilt engine. Um, I already rebuilt it and it's ready to go. All right, so you, you notice that, I, you can tell I rebuilt it and just left it. I haven't even tested it, you can tell why. If you see my timing mark is right at the top. So this engine hasn't even spun since I put it back together. And, and I can see that. I'm gonna take the gasket off so it doesn't fall anywhere. Um, but you can honestly see that my timing mark, which lines up right with the top, it might have kicked forward a tiny bit. It's not a big deal. Um, but it lines up, there's a line here right at the top and it lines up with this little uh, round circle here. Um, now, Inside here, if you look at the top, we're gonna to do that. We're gonna come up and we're gonna look down inside there, just like if it was just your eye looking down inside there, and we're gonna look for our timing mark. We should have a flashlight kicking around here somewhere. There it is. Just so we can get a view down inside there so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But uh, uh, we're off it a tiny bit. So it probably just, like I said, kicked forward a little tiny bit. So let's see if we can get our flashlight there so we can see it. Now, to rotate it, to get to the timing marks, never rotate backwards. So always go uh, with this. This engine is gonna run counterclockwise. So you gotta run it like this. And we're really gonna just keep turning that like that until we see that timing mark. And there's a, actually a line on the cover. And if we bring it all the way around, there we go. We're starting to get to the time. Is that the timing mark? No, that's the F mark. So that's good, that's F. So the timing should be right there, yeah. So that timing mark right there, we're gonna line up. Now, we're not at the top of the stroke though. If you look at our, so you'll, this is something, you don't wanna set your timing like that. So right now, we're not at the top of our power stroke. We're at the bottom of it. So if you see, our timing hash mark here is down at the bottom. It, it shouldn't be down at the bottom like that. Our timing hash mark has to be up here. So we know right now that um, if I was to look inside here, the cam has been twisted and the valves are sitting very tight right now because they're under pressure from the cam. So that's not how you set the timing on your engine, obviously. So now we're gonna keep turning it. And there's two ways to do it. We can keep doing it and watch here. And nice and slow. And nice 
nice and slow. And now would I line up mark my mark? I'll bet you if I go and look right here. Yeah, oh yeah, look at that. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's try. You'll see right away, right down inside there. Oh, sorry. See our timing mark? See where it says T? So now we know our timing is right on at the top, right here. The timing is on right here at the top. It's perfect. So that is definitely top dead center of that engine. So now what you're gonna do is take your socket off here. You can leave everything there like that. Turn off our flashlight. So now what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna take your valve covers off. Uh, these valve covers should be 17 mil. And this is where you set your, uh, your valve clearance. That one. And your valve should have a little bit of play. It should be able to move. And uh, like my dad used to say, a slappy valve is a happy valve. So you do want it to be a little bit tappy, just like that. Uh, this one is already set. Um, but if you're going to do it, um, I'm gonna show you anyway. So you're gonna need a set of feeler gauges like this. They don't have to be just like this. They can be any kind of feeler gauges. These ones are old and worn. I've been having, I've had them for a very long time and you'll notice that they've, uh, some of them are well used. So if I go to my 04, 05, oh, 004 and 005, this is uh, the feeler gauges you're gonna need. Uh, the intake is point, uh, 0.004. Uh, you can't really see it on here, but you can see the 005, they're right beside each other. So, your intake, your fuel intake right here is going to go 0 0.004, like that, and that one's perfect. See, it's not, it's just right on there. Now, you want to be able to slip that underneath the valve guide but you don't want it, you just want it to be able to slightly move. You don't want it so tight, because uh, if you tighten this down, this is a number nine millimeter wrench, by the way. But if you tighten this so down that you can't get that feeler gauge out, this is way too tight and it's not right. So you want to be able to slip it under there and it not have any play, but it easy to slip in and out of, just like this one. I've Like I said, I've already done this one, so it's it's right on the nose. Again, then you're gonna to go to the bottom on your exhaust and you're gonna do the exact same thing. So what you'd wanna do is, I'll do this one with you. Uh, we're gonna need a number nine millimeter wrench. There you go. And um, I'll use just a pair of pliers. Now, uh, so up here, your nine is gonna loosen this nut, so we can loosen that off. And most times you can just turn it out by yourself with your hands here, but just like that. So I'm gonna get my valve guide, or uh, sorry, my feeler gauge. I'm gonna put my feeler gauge in there. And there's lots of distance now because I, I really loosened it up. So we're gonna tighten it down on it like that until I can feel it start pinching my feeler gauge. Just like that, yeah. So once it comes down and starts, so you can just, you can feel the pressure. You want to feel the pressure, but you don't, like I said, want to pinch it in there. So right here is perfect. So I'm just gonna let my filler gauge, I'm gonna tighten down that nut a little bit, not a lot, because you don't want this top to turn with that nut. So usually what I'll use is just a set of uh, pliers. You can get the wrench for it. Um, I've just never used one because it's something I just have to run to the toolbox all the time for. But this here is perfect. So now I have the clearance right there. 
and that is just perfect. That is exactly the valve clearance I want. Like I said, I just put it back to what it was, and that's it. But you wanna make sure that this nut is nice and tight. So once you get your field gauge out, if you want, you can grab it with your set of pliers and you can tighten down that nut one more time just to make sure, because you don't want it to get loose. But you wanna make sure and hold uh, your adjuster here so it doesn't turn with it. But this is perfect. Like I said, happy valve is a happy valve. So that's it. So this one right now is literally perfect. So um, I've done this so many times. And I find after you do uh, a valve clearance on these 125cc engines, especially you've had it for a while, um, once you do it again, it just kind of rejuvenates the engine, gives it uh, a little bit of a breath of life type thing. So now we got our valve covers back on. That's all good. So we're gonna tighten those back up. Again, when your valve covers, don't forget to tighten them because then it'll just start blowing oil all over the place or they'll rattle out and you'll just start losing oil everywhere. So that's it. We'll just tighten those up just like that. All right. Now I wanna make sure when I put my, my timing chain cover back on here, uh, I want to make sure that I don't I don't forget my gasket right here. So make sure your gasket goes back on. And when it goes, you're gonna want to put it like that. So when it turns, there's a little tab here, and it stops it right here. So we're gonna take our bolt, put it back in, just like that. Now when we tighten this bolt up. You want to tighten it, but you don't want to tighten it so tight that it actually snaps this cover. Because I've seen that happen before. People start cranking on this, and they'll literally pull the bolt right through, and you don't need to do that. Just a nice snug up like that. And that's it. And then we just have to put our engine covers back on. Just like that. Perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna put my cover pieces back on and that is it. And that's how you set the timing and do the valve clearance on a Grizzly engine.